Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Clement Tam from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. In this video, I'll share with you some critical tips and pearls to make argon laser peripheral iridoplasty work. These are my financial disclosures. Laser peripheral iridoplasty is a technique that applies laser contraction burns in the far extreme periphery of the iris, thereby contracting the iris stroma and leading to mechanical opening of the positionally closed drainage angle. Now on the left-hand side here, you see an eye with plateau iris syndrome in which there's a very prominent and anteriorly rotated ciliary body, which pushes the peripheral iris towards the inner surface of the cornea and thereby closing the drainage angle. After applying the laser peripheral iridoplasty, you can see an immediate thinning of the iris stroma, widening of the drainage angle, and their positionally closed angle is once again reopened. Laser iridoplasty is useful in acute primary angle closure, in acute lens-related mechanism of angle closure, also known as acute phacomorphic angle closure. It is also useful as an elective procedure in plateau iris syndrome, in secondary and malignant glaucomas, as well as being used as an adjunct to various forms of trabeculoplasty, as well as goniosiniculysis. In some text, it is described that you can use pilocarpy to, to constrict the pupil before applying ALPI, but personally, I do not do that. What I do is I apply a bright light into the contralateral eye. By doing this, I induce a pupillary constriction, thereby allowing me to access the far peripheral free of the iris with laser applications. And immediately after the laser, I can remove the bright light allow the pupil to go back into a more physiological state, and so I can immediately reassess the drainage angle or any residual appositional angle closure. Furthermore, you can also consider using aproclonidine or brimonidine to prevent IOP spike, but having said that, IOP spike is actually quite rare after ALPI applications. In terms of laser parameters, normally you would need to use relatively large spot size of about 500 to 1,000 microns, longer duration of about 0.5 seconds. And for brown iris, generally we start from a very low laser power of about 150 to 250 milliwatts. For light, lighter blue iris, you may need to start with a higher laser power. One of the most common reasons for ALPI not to work is because it is being, not, it is being applied not peripherally enough. Now on the left-hand side here, you see a very effective ALPI opening up a drainage angle, whereas on the right-hand side, the laser spot here is applied too centrally, too near to the pupil. And so the iris stromal contraction induced by the ALPI is not being placed at the right position to open up the drainage angle. This is by far the commonest reasons why ALPI sometimes do not work. Also, you should avoid using the semi-punch burn settings described elsewhere and these include relatively small spot size, shorter laser application duration, and also high laser power. Because such settings will result in charring or burning of the iris, resulting in these small burnt marks, which do not cause much iris stromal contraction. And furthermore, in this particular uh, uh, example, the laser is also being applied too far away from the peripheral iris. And so these laser spots are unlikely to exert any effect in opening up at positionally closed angles. You have also got to titrate the laser power against what you see at the slit lamp. If there's no iris stromal contraction, you can increase the laser power. Whereas if there is bubble formation, iris charring, pigment release, or if you hear a pop sound, then you decrease the laser power. Normally, over 360 degrees of the iris, we have to apply about 20 to 24 spots. We try to avoid large visible radio vessels as far as we can. And also we should avoid placing too many spots too closely together because that may increase the risk of iris necrosis or iris atrophy. Now this is a video showing the application of ALPI in an eye with plateau iris syndrome. You can see that there is immediate iris contraction around the spot of laser application. And this, on the one hand, thin the iris stroma and also pulls the iris away from the drainage angle and thereby 
reopening and a positionally closed drainage angle. I normally perform this under topical anesthesia and personally, I prefer the use of the Abraham contact lens. So in conclusion, argon laser peripheral iridoplasty is simple and safe. It effectively opens up at positionally closed drainage angles. Of course, it does not replace iridotomy or open up peripheral anterior synechiae. And also it is very useful in APAC, in, the, in acute phacomorphic angle closure, in plateau iris syndrome, in secondary angle closure, as well as being used as an adjunct in various forms of trabeculoplasty, as well as gonio syniculysis. Thank you very much indeed for your attention and time. If you are interested to read more about primary angle closure glaucoma, we have this textbook entitled Primary Angle Closure Glaucoma, A Logical Approach in Management, edited by Clement Tam from the Chinese University of Hong Kong and co-authored by a constellation of distinguished clinician scientists working in the field of primary angle closure glaucoma. This book is published by Springer and is currently available on the Springer online shop, amazon.com, as well as many major booksellers.